Hi everyone, this is Matt Tuchot Show with Intro Stats and today we're going to kind of be finishing up this chapter uh, that we've been going through this unit on how to collect data and analyze basic categorical and quantitative data. So we've been kind of going through this unit. Um, so we're in, uh, going to be looking at this last section uh, which goes over some of the common uh, summary statistics that are used in quantitative data. So if we go to my website, matt-2show.org, and you click on statistics, and uh, we're going to use my book today, just kind of look at my book. Uh, if you look in the, the, these chapters here, the chapters of the book, it's really more like units. Each chapter has a bunch of different sections. So if we go to chapter one, we've been kind of working through this material, through our videos, and through the problems. So we're going to be looking at uh, section 1G, which is the last section. So this was on um, looking at uh, some of the summary statistics that we use in quantitative data. So if I go ahead and uh, open up 1G and I'm just going to scroll down to almost the end of the chapter, end of the section and there it is, it's on page 94 and it says summary statistics. So this is just a list of some common statistics that you find in uh, quantitative data. Okay, so um, the main thing is they're sort of broken up into uh, centers, right? We said a, a center is sort of a type of average. We want averages to be close to the center of our of our histogram and our dot plot. Um, so center again goes with averages. And then we also have measures of spread and then measures of position. So we're going to look at each of those. Um, so we're going to start with uh, four measures of center. So four measures of center. Um, so these are four different types of averages you can think of them as. So we've gone over some of these. For example, the mean average we've gone over already. This was the balancing point in terms of distances. Um, again, measures the center or average when the data set is normal. It's not accurate when the data is not normal. Okay, that's kind of one of the things we learned about the mean. The median average is our most accurate average. This is the center of the data in terms of the orders. When you put the numbers in order and go to the center. Um, so this is also a type of average. We've talked about this one. But here's a couple new ones for you. The mode. The mode, some of you may have heard in the past. Maybe you took a math class and they said mean, median, and mode. Right? The mode. The mode is the number that occurs most often in a data set. Now the one thing about mode is not all data sets even have a mode. Since uh, the mode is the number that appears most often, um, some data sets won't have any mode. So if all the numbers in the data set um, only appeared once, you would have no mode in the data set. So sometimes if you go to a computer program and push mode, sometimes you'll see none. It'll just write the word none there because because all the numbers appeared only once in the data set and so there was no mode. Sometimes there's only one number that appears most often. Maybe most of the numbers appeared once, but we had one number that appeared three times. So that would be the mode. You could also have like multiple modes. So if I had like, um, I might have two or three uh, modes. So I might have two or three numbers that appear most often and they all would have to appear most often. So maybe they all appeared, maybe I had three numbers and they all appeared four times. So the, the computer would list the three numbers and then it would say N for mode uh, or, you know, uh, that just means how many times that mode appeared. So, um, so that's, that's a good one to remember. That's an, a type of average or center. Um, mid-range is also a good one. It's an old one. Uh, not many people use mid-range very much anymore, but it's actually um, a really quick measure of average. So it's if you need to, if you kind of get handed some data and you don't have time to put it in a computer and calculate the mean or the median, you can, you can actually calculate the mid-range, you know, pretty quickly without a computer. Um, but it's not very accurate. The mid-range is sort of a, um, um, an easy, easy to calculate average, but it's not super accurate. The mean and the median are much more accurate. 
So the mid-range is basically calculated by going halfway between the max and the min. So you take the biggest number in the data set plus the smallest number in the data set and then divide by two. That's called the mid-range. So we have four measures of center or average, mean, median, mode, and mid-range. Uh, now we're looking at four measures of spread. So we're looking at measures of variability now. Again, some of these we've gone over in the past, and but um, let's look at a couple. We're going to have a couple new ones. Um, standard deviation, we said, was how far typical values are from the mean in a normal data set. So remember, the standard deviation was our most accurate sp spread calculation for normal data. This is a very famous uh, measure of spread in statistics, standard deviation. Um, but again, remember that it only is accurate if the data is normal. Um, another one that you'll sometimes see is the variance. The variance. Uh, variance is sometimes denoted as uh, S squared or the square of the standard deviation. So if you square the standard deviation, you get variance. Or if you think of it this way, if you take the square root of the variance, you get the standard deviation. So, um, so it's basically just the standard deviation squared. It's very f uh, famous in ANOVA testing. Sort of towards the end of the class, we'll get into ANOVA testing a little bit, and then you'll hear this word variance pop up. Just remember that because it's the square of the standard deviation, it is a measure of how far numbers are from the mean. So it is a measure of spread about the mean, and it's only accurate when the data is normal or bell-shaped. Okay, so standard deviation variance. Um, another a very common um, measure of spread that is sometimes used is called the range, just range. Now the regular range is a, a very quick, easy to calculate measure of spread. It's basically just the max minus the min, so it's very easy to calculate. And it's also very famous, a lot of people uh, that, even, that uh, uh, maybe out in the world would kind of have an idea in their head what the range of a data set is. Um, but it's not actually super accurate in the sense that it doesn't really measure typical values. It measures really the max, it just uses the max and the min, so it, um, it can uh, be a little bit misleading. I, I pref much prefer standard deviation or interquartile range uh, as my measure of spread than regular range. Regular range is easy to calculate, but again, does not really give me typical values. So just remember, range is max minus min. That's how to, how to calculate the range. Now we did the interquartile range, interquartile range. So interquartile range is down here at the bottom. Uh, we found that this was the most accurate measure of spread for non-normal data. So standard deviation is what we use for normal data. Um, interquartile range is what we use for skewed or non-normal data. Again, it, it measures how far typical values are from each other in a skewed or non-normal data. It's calculated by doing quartile 3 minus quartile 1. That's how it's calculated. Okay. So again, uh, four measures of spread. Standard deviation, variance, range, and interquartile range. And now we have the measures of position. So measures of position. So measures of position aren't necessarily measures of spread or center. They're more like markers that you compare to. So for example, the minimum value in the data set is the number that every all the other numbers are greater than. Right? So it's a, the uh, smallest number in the data set. Um, the maximum value in the data set um, is the largest number in the data set. Again, it's the number that all the other numbers are less than. Um, we also learned two more measures of position. First quartile, Q1, is the number that approximately 25% of the data is less than. And the third quartile, Q3, is the number that approximately 75% of the data values are less than. We said in non-normal skewed data, the typical values are between Q1 and Q3. So these are also used to find typical values in um, non-normal or skewed data sets. One last statistic that um, actually is useful is the frequency or sample size. So frequency or sample size n. So um, that uh, 
is a um, uh, how many numbers are in the data set. Sometimes it's called total frequency, sometimes it's called sample size. I've seen some computer programs that say total number of trials. There's all different words for it. Uh, the, but little lowercase n is usually denoted as sample size, which tells you how many numbers are in your data set. And that's always important information. If you remember in our study of bias, one of the sampling biases is that your data set could be too small. And again, so that's why it's always good to know how many numbers are in your data set. All right, so I'm hoping this was useful for you. So this was uh, Matt Tuchot and Intro Stats. I'll see you next time.